Hi there, this is the Common Magician, and I want to try something with you. Um, we're going to make some decisions, but of course, as usual, I have no friends, and you're not here with me, uh, so we'll use some apparatus here to make some decisions for us, but we'll have to make some true decisions. So um, I want you to imagine you have a deck of cards. You've seen this kind of trick before, right? Uh, and uh, this this imaginary, you know, invisible kind of deck of cards that you're holding right there. Uh, inside the box, uh, I want to take out, uh, uh, we're going to remove some of the cards uh, from the box. Uh, we'll go with black or red. What would you like to remove from the box, black or red? We'll say that heads is black and tails is red. So we'll just flip the coin here and see what we come up with. So it comes up with uh, tails. Uh, so we'll remove the red cards and we'll take the red cards out of our box. And you're looking at them in front of you. Um, in there... You've got uh, number cards and picture cards. Number cards and picture cards are, are part of this. So you have uh, the the uh, uh, ace through tens, and then you have the jack, queens, kings, two different kinds of groups. Uh, which would you like to pick out of there? Uh, the number cards or the picture cards? Again, we'll do number cards are heads, picture cards are uh, tails. So we'll do this. And it's tails, so we'll pick out the picture cards. You're looking at all the picture cards right there. And uh, we, have, um, we have hearts and we have diamonds. So we have hearts and diamonds. Which ones would you like to uh, uh, use? Which ones would you like to uh, uh, um, go forward with? Hearts or diamonds? We'll do uh, hearts are heads. Diamonds are the uh, tails. And just as before, whatever you choose is what we do. And oops, landed here. Uh, landed tails. I can't remember what I said. I think I said tails is diamonds, if that's right. So uh, we'll go with the diamonds. So we have uh, now the Jack, Queen, King of Diamonds, three different cards there. And um, uh, I had this here in case we needed to do numbers, but we'll do this here. I have a die that has only three numbers on it, one, two, and three. Uh, and it has one, two, and three. So only, it's only spotted for one through three. We'll say Jack, Queen, King, one, two, three. Uh, so in our diamonds, we have Jack, Queen, or King, and we'll just roll to see which one you want to use. Two, we go with the uh, Queen. So we have uh, the Queen of Diamonds. I have a deck that's been sitting in full view the entire time. It's sitting right there. And uh, very interesting. What I want you to do is I'd like you to pick up the deck, and I want you to spread it out on the table. Just pick it up, set it right down, spread it out on the table. And if you were to do that, you would see that there's one card in the entire deck that is facing the wrong way. You see that one card is indeed the queen of diamonds. So, right, there's a little bit of this that feels like uh, you know what's going on, but then there should be a moment at which you say, well, I don't know about that. I'm not sure how that works. So um, I want to talk with you today about, uh, this is a bit of a tutorial, but it's also uh, part of the tricks that I do. Uh, so this is a tutorial, but it's also tricks that I do. Uh, this is getting into the weeds now. This is not a particular trick that I would do, uh, but if I'm in the environment, this is something that I would set up to do in an impromptu kind of situation. I would I would be able to perform a trick like this. It's very, very strong. People make real decisions, and it's really solid. And the reason why I came to this is because I saw earlier on one of the forums today a discussion on equivocate. Uh, they were looking at um, uh, the performance of Magic uh, using only equivocate. And you know I like equivocate. It's something that I use quite frequently. I have strong feelings about how it should be done. Uh, and I have some people that I follow that I, I believe in, at least in their philosophies on it. Those people are uh, David Berglas and his Berglas Effects book. Uh, he, he talks extensively about equivocate. Uh, the fact that it is a weak method, but it can be used in a strong manner. Uh, and then also Max Maven uh, has a, a number of uh, uh, pieces out there that deal with equivocate. He uses equivocate extensively, uh, very boldly, and uh, I like the way he uses it. And these people largely agree with each other in the way they treat it. And then the last one is Stephen Long, Hector Chadwick, um, uh, had a, a video uh, lecture that I uh, purchased 
some time ago. Very short. It's not a very long one. I don't think it's on the market anymore because now he talks about Equivoque in his re recent book that's come out. I think it's a significant portion of it. So I'm not sure you can still get that lecture. Um, but he talks about Equivoque in the right ways to use it. And uh, again, the fact that it's a weak, weak method. It is a weak method, but there are ways that it can be managed and used in very strong ways. Um, generally, I like to use Equivoque as a subtlety in another effect, you know, some other kind of uh, layered effect that has uh, layers of methods that are working, and Equivoque will play a very small but powerful role to, to really throw off the scent. Um, uh, one of those ways that I like to use Equivoque is in uh, a, a dribble kind of force situation where you dribble the cards, uh, they say stop, you grab a peek. Uh, and then you can ask them, would you like to go here, uh, one more or one less? And no matter what they say, you always show them that card. Uh, because this could be one more card. It could be this is one less card. Uh, or this is where we stopped. It really doesn't matter what they say. But that's an equivocate choice. It's an ambiguous question that doesn't really reveal how it comes out or what you're going to do. Uh, so I like to use equivocate kind of buried like that. Sometimes, though, I will use it as a very big kind of... A uh, uh, singular method. Uh, when I showed my Colossal Killer at the beginning of the series, very first trick I put on the series, obviously that's what was at work there, and that's how I like to use it uh, for Colossal Killer. This is very similar, and it follows a similar track. However, you get to a point there where you realize that I'm not doing that anymore, and there's free choices. So going off of that discussion that I saw earlier on the Magician's Forum about an equivocate that actually was this exact same trick, exactly as you saw this here, it was the same trick, However, this presentation was a little bit different. Um, I like to use Equivoque with multiple outs, uh, really always. I don't like to use Equivoque only on its own unless I'm doing just three or four choices. And in, in that case, I'm, I'm willing to do Equivoque because there's so few. And you, there's only a couple of questions that you have to ask to get there. Uh, but when you have large numbers... Uh, to choose from, I really like to settle on multiple outs at the end. So I just want to explain, this is a kind of trick that I would do. It's really something that would be thrown together informally in the moment. I would sit there and ponder for a few seconds among people when the attention is not on me. I would put it together and then I would do the thing. Uh, and you're going to start to see a lot more tricks like that in the series. Uh, things that I would do Really, in the off moment, I would design on the fly right there some of the best magic that I do, and some of the best magic that you can do is like that, and there's strategies that you can use to do that sort of thing. So we'll get a, a little bit more into tutorials as we talk about that kind of magic. But here's the setup. Uh, I have my Queen of Diamonds turned the wrong way, uh, face up in the deck, but I also have on the top of the deck Jack of Diamonds, I have on the bottom of the deck the King of Diamonds. I have in the card box that's sitting here the Jack of Hearts. I have on the back of the card box inside the cellophane on this side the Queen of Hearts. So I could just turn the box over and show it. And then I have the last one is actually in my wallet is the King, King of Hearts. Uh, so it's quite self-explanatory at this moment, but I have uh, multiple outs for six different cards, and all of them would be very strong reveals, right? I could I could go to the King of Hearts at the very end and pay no mind to this and say, I have a deck of cards here, but I have one card that I keep out, and I keep it in my wallet, and it happens to be the King of Hearts. Very strong. There's a full deck sitting here. Obviously, I don't have to show everything. They had a wide variety of choices. There's no way that I could have, uh, uh, you know, uh, an out like that for every one of these cards. Uh, this, you know, this plays pretty strong. There's just one card out of a whole deck there in my wallet. So um, all of these would play good. Just kind of to think this through, there's the wallet one. Um, let's say that they came to uh, the uh, Jack of Diamonds. I would say that deck has been sitting there the entire time. I would like you to just take the top card off and take a look at it. They would look at that. It would be the Jack of Diamonds. I could also say, the deck has been sitting there the entire time. I have not touched it. Would you please pick up the deck and take a look at the bottom card? Then they would show the King of Diamonds. Obviously, the Queen of Diamonds is the one that worked out in this perfectly by chance. And it just happened to hit that example that was uh, on that forum. Uh, but the next one would be, that deck has been sitting there the entire time. You see it sitting on top of the box. 
Uh, what I want you to do is take the card box, though, and we're going to open it up. And I'm not going to touch the inside, but you'll see that there is one card very openly sitting inside. We'll drop that out, take a look at what it is. It is the Jack of Hearts. And then, of course, the last reveal uh, uh, would be uh, the Queen of Hearts that we haven't covered is... That deck has been sitting there the entire time, sitting on top of the card box. You would note that there's one card missing from the deck, and it happens to be right here on the bottom of the card box. That is the Queen of Hearts. So either way, you have an out. Cleanup is simple. You, you can just move on right from there very directly. The only thing you have to contend with is one reverse card in the deck. Uh, you can put the cards back in the box to pick up that jack. Um, you're still out the king over here, which you can return at any moment. But anyway, that is, that's a kind of trick that I would do. I like to design things kind of in the moment, um, where I'm sitting in an informal setting. The attention is not on me. I have the ability, and not just with cards. We're going to get into this in some other areas too, but just ordinary object kind of magic that you can design in the moment and uh, perform it there using the tools at your disposal, equivocate being one of them. Very, very weak method, but can be used in very strong ways if you uh, nuance it right, if you bury it in the right way, and if you have uh, a system worked out to make it operate uh, very well. Uh, again, just notes on equivocate. I think it's very important with equivocate that you uh, don't have the spectators make choices for so they don't choose things for themselves, but rather they name something and it is moving geographically. It's going here, it's going there. It's coming out of the proverbial card box. They're being picked out. They're being removed. Uh, they're being uh, set down. They're being picked up. They're given to somebody. They're given back. Uh, they're put up in front. Uh, these kinds of these kinds of movements of the choices. Uh, I think that's really the best way that equivocate functions. I can't say that enough. So in your equivocate as you do it, try to come up with uh, verbal ways to move uh, selections around so that uh, uh, a spectator does not feel that they're choosing something and taking it for themselves, but rather they are moving it from here. We'll take these and we'll move it over here. And why don't you hold on to these for a moment, right? That kind of uh, presentation, which is what we saw in that example uh, on that forum discussion, which was a very good example, by the way. Uh, but anyway, that uh, that's my trick that I do. Uh, very impromptu yet set up kind of designed trick on the fly using equivocate multiple outs. Uh, a lot of opportunity there. Of course, things like this can be done with coins, right? You can have coins in the hand or imagine coins and you can have a coin put uh, under an object, one sitting under a cup, sitting under a saucer, sitting under the placemat, uh, you know, that kind of a thing. Uh, you could have it sitting uh, in inside of the fold of a wallet and the wallet sitting on the table under a cell phone. A lot of opportunity there just with having coins placed in different places that are readily available and using multiple outs and a little bit of equivocate. So good luck with that and happy magicking.